Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about valence bond theory, which describe how the bonding takes place in terms of overlapping atomic orbitals. In this theory, atomic orbitals are often hybridized, mixed, to form new orbitals with different special or orientation. These are the, more the most typical examples that we are going to discuss by using energetic diagrams. Let's start with the first, methane, which has an sp3 hybridization. First, we have to draw the Lewis structure for methane. Second, we have to write the electronic configuration for the central atom, in this case carbon. Third step, we have to find the steric number, which is equal to number of sigma bond plus number of lone pairs. In this case, we have only sigma bonds, no lone pairs present so is equal to 4, which means that we have 1 s orbitals and 3 p orbitals included. Let's draw now a diagram that explains this kind of hybridization. We are going to use only the outermost electrons, the valence shell. In this case, is n equal to 2. We can see here that carbon is capable of forming only two bonds, with two unpaired electrons in the p orbitals. But, in our compound, it has four bonds. How can we explain this? In order for carbon to form four bonds, Carbon has to rearrange its valence shell by promoting one electron from S orbital to the P orbital. Carbon goes to an exciting state. You can see here that carbon is now capable of forming four bonds. But it's proved experimentally that at the methane molecule, all four bonds are identical in strength and energy. In this case here, we see here that we have the option to create four bonds, but they are not identical in energy. Here, the valence bond theory introduced the concept of hybridization by mixing the s orbitals with the p orbitals as much as we need. So, we have hybridization, And we have the formation of four sp3 orbitals. I mean, this is sp3, 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 sp3. What sp3 means? sp3 means that s orbital itself is a sphere. p orbital itself is a shape like this. And we have a combination that gives sp3 25% S character and 75% P character. How does it look when you combine these two together? It's a shape like this. So S and P. In this case, we have four of these. So if we draw it, it's going to be like this. And on the corner is going to form sigma bonds with hydrogens. Let's move now to sp2 hybridization. We have two examples. One is boron 3 chloride, and the second one is ethylene. Let's draw the Lewis structure. Let's write the electronic configuration. Let's draw the diagram for boron first. As you can see here, boron can form only one bond because it has only one unpaired electron. But in our case, we have a compound that exists that is boron trifluoride. 
In order for boron to create three bonds, borons promote one electron from S to the P orbital. This is 2P, one in this case. Boron goes to the exciting state. We see here that we have the option to create three bonds, but they are not equal in, in energy. So we have to make hybridization. We see here that boron use only one s orbital and two p orbitals to create bond, and one orbital from the p, because p has a maximum of three orbitals, remains empty. This is the reason why boron has an incomplete octet. You see it has one orbital empty. Let's move now to the acetylene. Let's draw the diagram. As you can see here, carbon can form only two bonds because it has only two unpaired electrons. Carbon goes to the exciting state by promoting one electron from the 2s to the p orbital. You see here that the carbon is capable of forming four bonds, but only the sigma bonds and the lone pairs around the central atom can be hybridized. P bonds does not hybridize. As you see here, this is a P bond and this is a sigma bond. So carbon is going to hybridize only one S orbital and two P orbitals. 3sp2. This pz, because this is px, py, and pz, is going to give us the p bond. Let's draw it how it looks like. The sides give the p bond, which is weaker than sigma bond. And these are sigma bonds from the hydrogens. Let's move now to sp hybridization. Typical example, beryllium, dichloride, and ethylene. Let's draw the Lewis structure and the electronic configuration. Let's make the diagram for beryllium dichloride. And the 2p0, which is empty. Beryllium, in order to form two bonds, two sigma bonds, is going to promote one electron from S to the P. And beryllium is going to hybridize by giving two sp orbitals and remaining two p orbitals empty. So if you if we draw it, it's going to be like this. Beryllium in the middle and the chloride on the side. These are going to be the sigma bonds. Let's move now to the diagram for the acetylene. So acetylene was like, it has two P bonds and one sigma bond between, between these two carbons. Carbon is going on the exciting state by moving one electron from S to the P orbital. In order to form four bonds, but only two hybridized. 2SP2 two two remain unhybridized and forms P bond. So let's draw it.
So as you see, in the middle is a sigma bond and on the sides are the two p bonds, perpendicular with each other. Let's move now to sp3d. A typical example is kryptonium trithuride, a cation. Let's draw the Lewis structure. Let's write the electronic configuration. For the diagrams, we are going to use only the most outer shell, that is 4, in this case. We're going to leave out the 3D. So let's draw the diagram. As you may see, Krypton has three bonds and two lone pairs around the central atom. If we look at the ground state electronic configuration, we see that the Krypton is not capable of making any bonds because there is no unpaired electrons. How Krypton is capable of making these bonds? First of all, we have to take into account the formal charge here on the Krypton atom which means krypton is going to be a cation by removing one electron. Now krypton is going to promote an electron from p to the d orbital in order to have three unpaired electrons to create three bonds. As you see here, Krypton has two paired electrons, orbitals with paired electrons, and three orbitals with three unpaired electrons. So now Krypton needs to hybridize to give us five orbitals. Let's draw it. It gives us five sp3d orbitals Two are the lone pairs around the central atom, and three are ready for creating bonds, forming bonds. Let's move now to sp3d2. Typical example, phosphorus hexafluoride anion. Let's draw the Lewis structure. Let's write the electronic configuration. Let's draw the diagram. Phosphorus in this case has a formal charge that is negative, so we are going to add an electron to phosphorus. In order for phosphorus to create six bond, it needs to go to the exciting state as an anion and move two electrons, one from P and one from S, to two d orbitals. Using of d orbitals happens only on period three and below to the periodic table. Period one and period two are not capable of including d orbitals on their hybridization, only S and P. six sp3 d2 orbitals how is it going to look like as a shape like this we have sp3 d2 combined it with p orbitals from fluorine this is the combination an easiest way to find the hybridization without doing the diagrams is by using steric number. For example, ammonia. Steric number is equal to number of 
Sigma bonds plus number of lone pairs, in this case is 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, which means that its hybridization is 1s and 3p orbitals. Another example is SF6, for example. If we draw the Lewis structure, steric number for this compound is 6, which means that it has 1s orbitals included, 3p and 2d orbitals, a total of 6 orbitals. This is a short way to find hybridization, but the complete way is by drawing the diagrams, which explain the bonds how are formed. That's it for this video, guys. If you find it helpful, give it a thumbs up. See you in the next video. Peace.